de verdad se considera un ciudadano normal. From a Spanish political thriller to a nostalgic nod to mid-90s LA, welcome to France 24's weekly film show with our critic, Emma Jones. Hello, Emma. Hello. Welcome to the show. Now, we're starting with El Reno or The Realm. Now, this is a film about corruption in Spanish politics. Is it going to hold the interest, though, of an international audience? I think it should. It's an absolutely fantastic political thriller and it's, all, it's won seven Goya Awards. They are the Spanish equivalent of the Oscars. And I think had this film been made in English, it would be a much more widely recognised movie. And the, 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 the brilliance of the script actually makes it ripe for an English remake although it is Spanish to its fingertips. Now, it's directed by Rodrigo Sorogoyen. He made May God Save Us, and he's back with the same writer and the same lead actor, Antonio De La Torre. And if you know this actor's work, he was in The Fury of a Patient Man a couple of years ago, you'll know that he's a class act. He was also in TV's The Night Manager with Tom Hiddleston, if that's more your thing. <laughs> but uh, Antonio plays Manuel. He's a regional vice president. He's got, he's got his eyes on the top job. And the very staccato script quickly introduces us to, to him and his cronies. And they're all about the power and the perks of being in politics, not public service. However, a new wind is blowing in from Madrid. The smell of scandal is in the air and Manuel's going to be a very unwilling scapegoat. OK, well, let's take a look at the realm. Sounds fabulous. Vaya panda de gánsters. ¿Tú eres consciente de que puede caer todo el mundo? Soy consciente de millones de cosas que eres incapaz de imaginar. Prevaricación, fraude continuado a la administración pública, estafa y falsedad en concurso y tráfico de influencias. It certainly looks exciting. Mm. Um, it seems the audience is in a position of rooting for the real anti-hero. Yes, I think as a director, Sorogoyen's never really been interested in anyone occupying the moral high ground. You see that in other work he's done. And so the audience finds itself in the very interesting position of rooting for Manuel. But his characterization is so complete that you do find yourself hoping that he does manage to take revenge on, on all his friends and all that complexity that that brings. I really like parts of the direction. You're always following Manuel down corridors and um, to echo the character nervous movements and as you probably heard there there's a constant electronic soundtrack which adds a pulse to the film I think the film did really well in Spain because it did ask very uh, topic topical questions about corruption in Spanish gov in the Spanish government but then I think everyone is probably asking themselves right now about corruption in government and so it should play to, to many audiences I should add that the violence in this film is all psychological. And uh, that I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So overall, you'll probably come out of the film feeling very disillusioned with government officials, but you'll have your answer on how far someone will go who is culpable to try and evade blame. And that's very far indeed. OK, well, it does sound very exciting. That was The Realm. OK, next to a yeah. film that you absolutely love, Mid-90s, is out <laughs> yeah. in France next week. Yes. Um, and it's the directing debut of Jonah Hill. Tell us more. Yes, it is. I love this film, uh, Mid-90s by Jonah Hill. Of course, he, he was in Superbad, he was in 21 Jump Street. And this, Mid-90s, is an 85-minute gem of a debut film, in my opinion. And it's an homage, basically, to the L.A. that he grew up with in the 1990s. Uh, there have been a few skater movies which have moved beyond fans of the sport in recent years. I'm thinking of a female ensemble called Skate Kitchen. But if you like mid-90s, you'll like it because it's essentially a coming-of-age story about Stevie, a 12-year-old boy who's a really keen skater, and he ends up uh, hanging out with some older boys, and they effectively become his family. Stevie's played by Sonny Sulich. Uh, you may have seen him in The Killing of a Sacred Deer. He played the very young child in that. Please watch out for him. He's going to be an amazing actor as an adult if he carries on. Lucas Hedges, who we've known since Manchester by the Sea, is also great in the film. He plays uh, Stevie's 
monosyllabic but very violent older brother and Catherine Waterson's also in the movie as Stevie's mom, who had the kids when she was very young, is probably not paying them enough attention and certainly should be horrified at her son's new friends. OK, well, let's take a look then at mid-90s. Why we ride a piece of wood, like what that does to somebody's spirit. Oh! Oh, one of the things I really like about the film, it's shot through with that David Lynchian L.A. light. Uh, Jonah Hill wrote the movie too, and when I first saw it, I was reminded in parts of Fellini's neorealism. Fellini went to, on to inspire Martin Scorsese, and Jonah Hill did work with Martin Scorsese on The Wolf of Wall Street. I think there are inevitably going to be comparisons too to Larry Car Clark and um, Har Harmony Corrine's kids, which did have the advantage of actually being made in the, in the mid-90s. And I'm not saying that Jonah Hill is going to be another Fellini or a Scorsese, just that he's made a very enjoyable, watchable uh, debut. And I think that if you're a fan of the story, then Sonny Sulich's performance as Stevie in all its wide-eyed sauciness, sauciness is going to uh, enchant you. Just have a look at mid-90s LA will be fun as well. Yeah, exactly. Sure. OK, well, let's... Um, Move on now to Working Woman by the documentary maker Michelle Avia. Now, it's a challenging watch from Israel mm. on the subject of sexual harassment at work, something very hot at the moment. Yeah, that is for sure. And because it is directed uh, by, a, by a female director, it's very much a female gaze into the, the issue of sexual harassment. It's a powerful film with Liron Ben Shush taking the, the lead role of Omar. Omar's got three children. Her husband wants to open his own restaurants. And so she takes a job with an older executive called Benny and she does really, really well. So she ends up getting promoted and she's juggling her lifestyle with her responsibilities at work. However, she is subject to increasing sexual harassment from her boss and her life nearly falls apart because she is now the main breadwinner of the family and she really needs the job. OK, well, let's take a look then at Working Woman, where we see the manipulation Omar faces from Benny. Well, it's the clear line. אני מפחיד אותך. אנחנו עובדים טוב ביחד, לא? אני מבטיח לך. מבטיח. לא סומכת עליי? בואי נמשיך. תראי שאנחנו נשכח מזה הרבה יותר מהר ממה שאת חושבת. It's a familiar situation. I'm surprised um, more films aren't being made about this subject. Yeah, considering since October 2017 and the birth of the Me Too movement, this has been such a hot topic. I think this is the first film I've seen on the subject. What I like about it is it does deal with it in a very re realistic way. I think one of the things that uh, victims of this kind of harassment encounter is when they tell their loved ones, their loved ones say, well, why don't you just leave? Why have you put up with this? And this is exactly what happens to Omar. And it's interesting in the film that she is the victim, uh, develops the language of fault after a particularly nasty uh, incident, she says, I made a mistake. Uh, I also find her confusion and just being unwilling to, to, um, to put her, to, to mistake her boss's overt friendliness for something else. You know, that's, that's all very realistic. Uh, it's, it's a powerful film. It deserves a wider release, although it is being released quite, uh, in quite a few cinemas in France. I don't think this will be the last film we see on, on this topic, that is for sure. Certainly not, certainly no. not. OK, that's Working Woman. Now, um, Akira Kurosawa is considered to be one of the greatest directors mm. of all time. Now, he died just before the millennium, leaving a legacy of some 30 films made over almost 60 years. Yeah. Now, and there's a chance to see some of them again in cinemas, isn't there? Yes, if you're a fan of him, this genius Japanese director, and then some of his collaborations with the prolific Japanese actor Toshiro Mifune are back in French cinemas from today. And uh, he starred in arguably uh, their greatest collaboration together in 1958, Seven Samurai. Uh, sadly, 
I don't believe this is getting a retrospective, but 11 out of the 16 of their collaborations are, and they're including some great films such as The Bad Sleep Well, Hidden Fortress, Redbeard and Yojimbo and Sanjuro, which is the follow-up to Yojimbo. And I want to focus on Yojimbo from 1961. Uh, it means the bodyguard and it's a story of a lone warrior who wanders into a village where there's two warring clans. It's a samurai Western film and uh, the great thing about this character, not only does he wear a very battered old dark kimono in, in both the films about this, this character, he's a man of no name, he makes his living from selling his sword and uh, it's, it's laced through, as well as violence of course, a lot of really, really great comedy. And this Japanese film actually went on to influence pretty much every Hollywood Western after it. Uh, Clint Eastwood's A Fistful of Dollars in 1964 was a direct remake down to him he playing the man with no name. And it would also inspire another Eastwood film, The Outlaw, Josie Wells, in 1976. But that's nowhere near as fun as this film. So altogether, I consider Yojimbo to be one of the best Westerns ever made and certainly went on to influence Hollywood for decades afterwards. OK, well, that definitely mm. sounds like... Watching, even though I'm not a massive fan of Westerns, I have to admit. <laughs> yeah. Emma, thank you so much for joining us. So we're going to leave you guys at home with Yo Jimbo. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.